Welcome to Cornerstone's Virtual Kids Church. My name is Miss Megan and I'm so glad that you are here with me today. Now, I'm also excited to tell you friends, it's finally May. I hope that those April showers that came by will bring these May flowers real soon and we'll get some awesome spring weather to enjoy some time and activities outside. Now, I thought we could kick off our time together by looking at a timeline today. Now our timeline is going to show us where we've been with our studies and where we're kind of going today and moving forward. So let's take a look real quick. Starting our timeline is Acts chapter 8. Now in Acts chapter 8, we learned that Philip went to Samaria and Judea. Do you remember who he got to talk to while he was there? Hmm, this is a little while ago. Yeah, he talked to an Ethiopian official. And remember, Philip was obedient to the Holy Spirit who prompted him to go speak with that official. He got to explain what the scriptures meant and that Ethiopian official was saved and baptized. Now we also moved then to Acts chapter 9 and two big things in that chapter of Acts we first see that Paul encountered Jesus. Now, do you remember what Paul's name was before he met Jesus? Yeah, it was Saul. Now, Saul was one of the people that was trying to stop the church from sharing the good news. He was treating Christians really poorly, but along his journey one time, he encountered Jesus. And he eventually became one of the people who helped spread the good news. He became a follower, a believer, and he shared what he had learned with so many others. Now, also in Acts chapter 9, Peter performs a miracle. He came across a man who had been bedridden. Are you ready for it? Eight years he couldn't walk or get up for eight years. And you know what Peter told him? He said to this man, Jesus Christ heals you. Get up and roll up your mat. And the man was healed. He got up, rolled up, walked out, right? And because of this miracle, many people came to believe in Jesus. In Acts chapter 10, God makes it super clear to Peter that the gospel is for Jews and Gentiles. Now, what does that mean for Jews and Gentiles? It means the gospel is for everyone. Now, that finally brings us to Acts chapter 11. And that's where we are today in our story. Now, our story in Acts chapter 11 actually begins by explaining a little bit about chapter 10. And I'd love to start by reading that section from my Bible with you guys. So Acts chapter 11 starts off with the title, Peter explains his actions, right? Peter, who got this vision. Here we go, starting in verse one. The apostles and the believers throughout Judea heard that the Gentiles also had received the word of God. So when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcised believers criticized him and said, You went into the house of uncircumcised men and ate with them? Starting from the beginning, Peter told them the whole story. I was in the city of Joppa praying, and in a trance I saw a vision. I saw something like a large sheet being let down from heaven by its four corners, and it came down to where I was. I looked into it and saw four-footed animals of the earth, wild beasts, reptiles, and birds. Now, let's just take a second to stop right there and envision that. Picture a large sheet coming down, and when you're able to look inside that sheet, you are seeing all these different animals. Do you guys have the vision? You have that picture in your head? Awesome. Let's keep reading. I'm going to pick up in verse 7. Then I heard a voice telling me, Get up, Peter, kill and eat. I replied, Surely not, Lord. Nothing impure or unclean has ever entered my mouth. Verse 9. The voice spoke from heaven a second time. Do not call anything impure 
that God has made clean. This happened three times and then it was all pulled up to heaven again. Right then, three men who had been sent to me from Caesarea stopped at the house I was staying, where I was staying. The Spirit told me to have no hesitation about going with them. These six brothers also went with me and we entered the man's house. He told us how he had seen an angel appear in his house and say, Send to Joppa for Simon, who is called Peter. He will bring you a message through which you and all your household will be saved. As I began to speak, the Holy Spirit came on them as he had come on us at the beginning. And then I remembered what the Lord had said. John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So if God gave them the same gift he gave us who believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I to think that I could stand in God's way? Verse 18, are you ready for it? When they had heard this, they had no further objections and praised God saying, so then, even to Gentiles, God has granted repentance that leads to life. We know the gospel, the good news, is for all people, and Jesus loves everyone. Well, the next title here, right before verse 19, says the church in Antioch. So that means it's time to see who's Barnabas and why are we learning about him? Or what are we learning about him today? So let's jump into our Bible story video and find out. God had called Peter to tell everyone the good news about Jesus, no matter who they were or where they came from. So Peter, shared the gospel not only with Jews, but with Gentiles. The Gentiles in Caesarea heard Peter's message and believed. God gave his Holy Spirit to these new believers and they were baptized. Before long, the apostles and other believers throughout Judea heard the Gentiles had believed the good news about Jesus. They were surprised, so Peter shared about the vision God had given to him of the sheet of clean and unclean animals and his encounter with Cornelius. Peter explained that the gospel is for all people. Then the believers praised God and understood that Jesus had come for the Gentiles too. At the same time, believers who scattered after Stephen's murder had traveled to places like Phoenicia, Cyprus, and Antioch or Syria. In those places, the believers only shared the gospel with the Jews. But some believers from Cyprus and Cyrene went to Antioch and preached the gospel to the Greeks too. God was with them, and a large number of the Greeks believed the good news. The church at Jerusalem heard about these new believers, so they sent Barnabas to Antioch. Barnabas was a good man. He loved God and was full of faith and the power of the Holy Spirit. When Barnabas arrived, he saw that God was gracious to these believers. He was glad and encouraged them to keep following God. Even more people trusted in Jesus. Then Barnabas left Antioch and went to Tarsus to look for Paul. Mm. He found Paul and brought him back to Antioch. They stayed with the church in Antioch for a year, teaching large groups of people. Jesus' followers were first called Christians at Antioch. Even though some people tried to stop it, the gospel spread throughout the earth, not only to Jews, but also to Gentiles. The good news about Jesus is for everyone. God calls us to celebrate when others believe and help them know and love Jesus more. So the book of Acts is part of the New Testament and it gives us a history of the early church. It also includes details about the apostles and their travels to tell people about the good news of Jesus. So we were learning about Barnabas 
And in Acts chapter 11, verses 23 and 24, it says this about him. When he arrived and saw what the grace of God had done, he was glad and encouraged them all to remain true to the Lord with all their hearts. He was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and faith, and a great number of people were brought to the Lord. Now, Barnabas was a man of God who was full of the Holy Spirit, and God used him to not only encourage new believers of Antioch, but also to bring so many people to faith in Jesus. So I'm thinking right now would be a great time for us to play a game to just check our understanding of today's story as we keep moving forward on our timeline. So we're going to do this. I'm going to show you the questions and answer choices on the screen and there will be a timer. I'll read the questions and the answer choices out loud and you can play this however it works wherever you're watching. You can kind of think of your answer in your head before we show you it. You can call it out loud at the TV or maybe you're watching with other friends and you might want to write it down on a piece of paper and really play the game and keep score. But remember, we're just playing for fun to check some of our key ideas and key points from today's story. So let's do that game and then we'll check back in. How did the Jewish believers react after Peter explained what happened with Cornelius? Red, Peter never explained what happened with Cornelius. Blue, they said, no way, not possible. Yellow, they glorified God and understood all could be saved by faith. Or green, the Jewish believers still felt Jesus only came for them. They glorified God and understood all could be saved by faith. Who did the scattered believers share the gospel with? Gentiles, red, or blue, Jews? Yeah, they originally shared it with Jews, which is why it was so important that Peter's vision taught them that it was really for everyone not just the Jews. Where did Peter and Barnabas share the gospel? Red, New Jersey. Blue, their hometowns. Yellow, Jerusalem. Or green, they traveled to share the gospel to many people. Ah, if you said green, you got it. They were starting to travel further and further to share that good news. The story was actually about a man named Joseph, who the apostles called Barnabas because this nickname means red, man who travels far, blue, good guy, yellow, son of encouragement, or green, friend of many. Hmm, we didn't hear this in the Bible. But if we think about what we know about Barnabas, we can figure it out. How cool! The nickname means Son of Encouragement. True or false, the gospel is the good news that God sent his son Jesus into the world to rescue sinners. Red true, blue false. Yeah, absolutely true. You guys are awesome. I hope you had fun playing that game with me. Um, just a fun way to review some of the things that we have learned, right? We want to hide God's word in our heart and the truths that we learn as we study it. Well, let's check in on our question for today with Pastor Brian. Hey there, I'm Pastor Brian and it's time for questions from kids. Parker from Buffalo, Wyoming asks, I'm just a kid. How can I encourage others to follow Jesus? Parker, that is a good question, but I need to correct one thing about it. 
You're not just a kid, you're a kid. Kids matter, you have worth and value. And if you've trusted to follow Jesus, then you have a story to tell just like any adult and have that ability. So I wanna encourage you, think highly of yourself, think highly of the capability you have to tell other people, your friends, even adults about Jesus. Well, how do you do that? Well, it's simply telling them your story. Tell them why you trust Jesus, why you believe in Jesus, who Jesus is to you, what difference he's made in your life. So if you tell other people that if they trust in Jesus like you have, if they believe that Jesus is the Son of God, that he died for their sins and rose from the dead, that they too can have eternal life like you have. That's all it really is. It's us telling other people what we've experienced, what we believe to be true about the Son of God, Jesus Christ. That's all there is to it. And again, you have the ability to do that. I want you to remember that, really take that to heart, that you can make a difference for all of eternity as a kid, just like adults can. So here's a question back for you. How have other kids encouraged you in your faith? So talking through that question and answer reminds me of a game that we used to play um, when we were kids, and maybe you have played this before. The game is called Telephone, and what happens is the first person in the line thinks of something that they want to pass along the way to the others. Now, what they have to do is they have to whisper it in the person next to them in their ear and then that person is supposed to pass the message to the next one and so on until it gets to the end of the line. Now the person at the end then calls out what they heard. Now as the message is getting passed from person to person it's one in a whisper and two you're only supposed to say it one time. Now, what usually happens in the game, which makes a lot of people laugh, is the person at the end ends up saying something pretty different than what the message usually started at. Well, how does that relate to our question and answer today? Well, imagine playing telephone in a very different way. If the first person thought of something important that they wanted to share, and they whispered it to the very first person, the next person in line, and that person, instead of whispering it when they pass it, said it out loud for everyone to hear. And then the next person said it out loud for everyone to hear and kept going. The message at the end would probably be the same as it was when it started. Now this can be helpful for us as believers because when we go out and we boldly share the gospel or the good news with others and we have Christians around us in our life, they can be there to help us make sure the message is the right message, right? What the Bible says. And they can also help us if they hear us saying something that maybe we misunderstood, whether we misunderstood it in the Bible or misheard it somewhere, and they can help us correct it so that the message we repeat out loud is the correct one. Now, I was hoping we could talk about our story point and our key passage that we've been kind of thinking about as we're learning together. Now, today's story point for this study was that Barnabas went to Antioch to encourage believers right? He was a great man who loved the Lord, was filled with the Holy Spirit, and he wanted to encourage others. Now, because of his encouragement, many people came to know Jesus Christ. Now, I also wanted to look at our key passage, too, so we can keep practicing hiding this word in our heart. So remember, it's from 1 Chronicles 16, 31. And if you can, I'd love to hear you read it with me. Let the heavens rejoice, let the earth be glad. Let them say among the nations, the Lord reigns. First Chronicles 16, 31. Now friends, as we're talking about Barnabas encouraging others, this is actually perfect time for us to encourage others as well. This week is often called Teacher Appreciation Week. It's a time where we can tell our teachers Thanks so much for all your care, hard work, and even encouragement. Now, I want you to think about your teachers, and I want you to think about all the kinds of teachers that you have. You could have your school teachers, 
You can even have your parents as teachers. A lot of us have had our parents helping us teach, uh, especially in recent times, in recent school years, right? You also might have some kids' church teachers, or maybe even if you think about it, our pastors here, like Pastor Fred, is a teacher because he teaches us, Cornerstone Christian Church, about Jesus and the Bible. So teachers can be a whole bunch of people. What I want to encourage you to do is maybe get out your craft supplies, maybe some colorful paper, maybe some fancy uh, scissors, or just grab your crayons or markers, and make a thank you note. Make an encouraging note to one of your teachers, maybe thanking them for something that they did, or even just sharing an encouraging scripture with them. Or maybe you just want to draw a picture um, to make them smile. Saying thank you or just writing kind words is a great way for us to encourage others and other believers. And we want to follow the examples that we learn from the Bible. Well, friends, that wraps up our time together for today. We've got one more song to sing before we go. But I also wanted to say thanks for joining me to talk more about what the gospel is and how to share that good news and that we should share it with everyone. Have a great week, friends. Bye. Just one word, you calm the storm that surrounds me. Just one word, the darkness has to retreat. Just one touch, my eyes were open to see, my heart can't help but believe, there's nothing that our God can do, there's not a mountain that He can move, oh praise the name that makes a way, there's nothing that our God can do, just one word, you heal what's broken inside. Praise the name.